Welcome, everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network. I'm your co your co host Scott Patton, and joining us as usual is Health Coach Martin Patella. Hey, Martin. We had to talk about this. This is like an emergency uh, recording that we're doing because I spent 20 years in the grocery industry managing grocery stores in Canada. And one of the things that we never thought about much was what was on our apples. So what they would do is they would spray this kind of wax on apples to prevent them from decomposing faster or fast. And... We were just told it was like this edible, waxy thing. Don't worry about it. It just, you know, it washes off or it doesn't matter. It won't do any harm. How naive we were 20, 30, 40 years ago. Well, you know, it was edible wax. We believed that paraffin was edible. It's not really. But maybe they were using natural plant waxes. I don't know. I have yeah. not studied that in depth. But in my head, I think it makes sense that you would want to extend the life of produce because if you have to throw away less of it, you can actually uh, lower the margin. Because when, I, I mean, you know, in produce, like how much of it gets thrown away is astounding. Right. And actually one of the, <laughs> and I would agree with you, except that it can be turned into something else. Apples can be sliced up and put into apple pie. Apples can be juiced, turned into apple juice. Now, that doesn't mean that 100% of the apples won't go bad or that 100% of the apples won't not get sold and, and decompose, but that's something that is natural, right? So even produce that doesn't survive long and starts decomposing, rather than putting it into our landfill, we should be composting it giving it to the farmers so they've got more nutrients to put back into their soil. Um, okay, that's a really cool thought. So we could give it away to poor who are willing to eat an apple that's just a little shriveled, or maybe they'd be willing to eat some lettuce that is just starting to wilt a bit, and so and on, right? You just cut out the bad parts, which is what we do when we get home and we have an apple that's half rotten. I mean, when I was growing up, there was a big bruise. We just cut the bruise out and we ate it. Right. No. And if you so, don't catch it soon enough, half of the apple is gone and then and then the whole thing tastes bad. Right, right. Yeah. So I this whole it. thing of putting wax on apples 30, 40 years ago has gone to a whole new level. And there's this product or company called Appeal, A-P-E-E-L, yeah. which basically says, hey, we're going to make everything last forever. And, I, and I'm I say that tongue in cheek because I'm not sure they say that at all, but there are some concerns about what is in this. So, yeah, okay. Well, you know, I saw pictures of uh, lemons that were 60 days old, co coated with this, and they were looking as good as new, as freshly picked. And of course, I love the name Appeal because it's such a beautiful play on words that product produce appeals, and the appeal is. The target. So, ha. Well, the claim of the manufacturer is there's nothing here. These are not the droids you're looking for. This is made with natural occurring plant waxy substances known as mono and diglycerides. And when you hear the word glyceride, you actually readily think of triglycerides, which is what your doctor will check in your blood and will tell you if your triglycerides are high, you're in danger because triglycerides are inflammatory and they are associated with obesity and uh, a diet too high in starches and uh, pre-diabetes and stuff like that. So triglycerides are bad news. And yes, mono and diglycerides will very likely convert into them when ingested. But the point is that we're putting it on the outside of the plant or of the produce, like they put it on avocados and lemons and oranges. That doesn't seem too dangerous. If they start putting it on apples, I wouldn't want to eat them because, because these are emulsifiers. 
right? Mono and diglycerides are emulsifiers and they will penetrate into the skin. They will merge with the skin. This is not removable. They're in and they're done. Of course, the solvents that, that are used there are, are called ethyl acetate and heptane. And then, of course, that's not friendly stuff. They are affecting your central nervous system and they will cause headaches, nausea, drowsiness, and God knows what other ugly things. And then, of course, <laughs> then you start reading in the fine print, right? And in the fine print, it tells you that the primary components of Eddie Peel, as in edible peel or appeal, are 2,3-dihydroxypropyl palmitate, known as PA-1G, and 1,3-dihydroxypropane-2-YL palmitate, known as PA-2G. These are... Uh, defined by the uh, authorities as GRAS, generally recognized as safe. But I have no guarantee that they are because um, trans fats were also known as GRAS and look what we know about trans fats now. So, and anyway. What you're saying right now is... We've been told many things are safe and effective, and we found out later that they weren't particularly safe, nor were they particularly effective. And we have no way of knowing 10 years from now if we haven't caused a lot of problems in our digestive system. We'll just assume that we eat it. Yeah. One of yeah. the things I was going to ask you about is if this is kind of a sealant that goes over the uh, the peel of a fruit, or I guess avocado is a fruit, or other things, um, if it's not organic and it's been sprayed with pesticides, how do we know we don't have pesticide, um, you know, stuck between, you know, you can't wash it off because you've got this peel, a peel on top of it. And is it going to stay on the outside of the peel? Like with an avocado, that's a fairly solid barrier. Same, same I would think with maybe an orange or, or a, a lemon, but they don't strike me as quite the same thing. Um, or is it going to get absorbed in? And that is the main issue. That that would be my line. Indeed. This is, number one, a promotional line for buy organic, because now you're going to have these drivers, the mono and diglycerides. They do seal it in. And what we don't know is what is the interaction between the herbicide or pesticide or whatever was on the surface of this produce that has now been sealed and has had added these drivers that will push this stuff deeper into the body of the plant. So not only do you have pesticide on the plant, you now have it sealed and embedded and non-removable. You cannot get rid of it. So, yep, that's definitely a suspicious line. I would say that the biggest uh, story against it is <clears throat> that these diglycerides contain neutralizing agents. And these neutralizing agents can uh, include palladium, arsenic, lead, cadmium, and mercury. And these are there to kill off bacterial and fungal um, growth that may be happening under the seal of this waxy appeal. So when those get ingested, now you have a serious problem because arsenic, well, we already know you can poison people with arsenic. It will affect your eyes, liver, skin, whatever. Lead will cause children to be stupid, really, losing IQ. And kidney will affect your bones and will affect your kidneys. And mercury, my God, well, that affects everything. So, so I guess I guess my story would be this. If you are somehow suspecting that you ate stuff with a peel on it, you may as well assume that some of this material has gotten into the body of the plant and you now need to detox. 
which every one of us needs to detox. And I would use zeolite every day. I do. I use zeolite every day because I suspect that every day I'm exposed to mercury, lead, cadmium, arsenic, and now palladium. Yep. And actually, that was going to be my next question is how could we detox? And and I agree, like we live in an, an, a toxic environment. There are 50 tons of mercury spewed into the atmosphere through our different manufacturing processes. So we can't assume, we just, that we can assume that this may be one more stressor on our immune system, on our bodily functions. And now what can we do? And yeah, precisely. It's almost that we are unable to defend successfully. Like we can be vigilant, we can choose to eat organic, but then you go to a restaurant, you don't get to pick organic. They'll just serve you things. You go to somebody's house, you, you don't get to interrogate them that they do or don't buy organic. You just have to accept whatever it is that they serve you because you, you want to be, what, polite or friendly or just just a nice human. Well, right there, you're you're picking up stuff into your body. And this is not just this appeal. This is now everything that rains down on the produce as it grows. So you now have these uh, airplanes flying around spewing. I don't know what that stuff is because it's secret. They don't tell us. The analysis says that there's bromine and there's uh, aluminum and uh, barium. Oh, barium. Oh, my dear. Well, Barium is used for as a contrast agent in uh, in medical procedures, so it does not kill people in in uh, single dose uses. But I don't know what it does when you're exposed to it all the time. Right. Anyway, and my favorite, glyphosate, right? Roundup, right. Roundup, because it is water soluble, gets into everything and it is sprayed on fields, therefore it gets into groundwater, and it gets to evaporate, so it's in creeks, in aquifers, and in the clouds. So it's now raining on even the organic gardens. Small quantities, right? Not the end of the world, but in trace amounts, glyphosate will kill microbes. After all, it was originally patented as a antibiotic. So when you ingest it, it's wrecking the inner terrain, the inner garden in your body. And that is very unhealthy. So for that, number one, we need humic acid. So my daily routine is zeolite every day, humic acid every day, and maybe some probiotics just to be sure. Cool. And I was going to say, too, that, you know, we live for 70 odd years. So we have 70 odd years to accumulate all of this stuff in our bodies if we're not getting them out. And so, you know, we we, we have problems with cancer. Every You know, one in two people are supposed to get cancer. We have problems with heart attacks and, and um, obesity and everything else. And it's easy to say, well, it's, you know, your fault. You should have done this. You should have done that. But the fact of the matter is, is this environment that we're in and the food that and water that we consume in this environment all probably have a fair degree of toxicity that wasn't around, let's say, 200 years ago. So our bodies are now adjusting to a totally different environment than what they were, which means that we need to take action. And I'd really like what you said about the zeolite and the humic acid, uh, you know, so, but there are things to do. And I guess that's kind of the good news is, we can take action. We can make things do, you know, really good. One of the reasons that we were talking about appeal today is when I was on uh, YouTube, I noticed a couple uh, people were talking about it, and it was like four hours after they had posted. I happened to see it, and I thought, wow, like there's a lot of interest in this. And it's what's most interesting is Martin talked about this a year ago on his Telegram channel. So we're going to put the link to the Telegram channel below because, Martin, you were a year ahead of the curve 
And I suspect in many things, you're years, if not decades ahead of the curve. And so if you want to go on YouTube and see stuff that people are talking about now that you should have been knowing, learning about or knowing about like a year ago, then check our Telegram channel out because every Sunday Martin's on there uh, sharing his wisdom and his knowledge.